From October 25th to early November, this was me in a coma. And this type of coma was not the type of coma where you were like half awake, but rather it was a full coma where I was completely out. Now on this video, I will be telling you some things that Jesus showed me while I was in heaven. And I won't be telling you all the things that he showed me in heaven, but I will be telling you a lot. So I would encourage you, go grab your Bible, stay tuned because God is going to speak to you throughout this video. It's not my opinion. It's not me that changes your life. It's Jesus Christ in me. Jesus lives in me and he's gonna speak to you through this video. This was me in the coma. Let me refresh the photo there. So this was me in the coma. I had fallen off a skateboard. It was really crazy. Um, it was really sad. My skull was completely fractured. My brain was bleeding and I wasn't even awake at all. I was in a full coma um, for a long time, for one to two weeks in between the coma. I kind of woke up a little bit and then I, they took me back into the coma. While I was in the coma, you see the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, I'll show the photo just one more time so you guys can see it. While I was here in this coma, I actually have no memory physically of what happened on earth during the coma. So any tubes they put in me, anything like that, I have no memory. But what I do have memory of is when I went to heaven. And so that's what I'm gonna be telling you guys. And also I wanna pray before we start this video. Father God, I pray right now for the words spoken. I pray for everybody watching this, that they would be blessed, that their ears would open, that their eyes would open in Jesus name. And everyone says, amen, amen. Okay, guys, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter five, I already know what a lot of people are thinking. Gabe, how could you possibly actually be in heaven? Well, you see the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter Chapter 5 verse 8 we are confident I say and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord so what happened was in this coma I, my mind wasn't actually truly awake my body was still functioning but my spirit and soul man went to heaven and a lot of people would say things like oh Gabe you're preaching false Gabe you're just saying heaven just just to do this or do that no 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 in fact I've actually delayed telling you guys more about my experience because I've been praying and, and taking the time and doing what God wants me to do with my life so that the message can be heard correctly. You see guys, what happened was, what Jesus showed me in heaven, he confirmed many things that we have already learned throughout the scripture. And I'm gonna be telling you guys two things that, that he confirmed, but I saw it in a different light. The first thing that I wanna tell you guys about is this. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, the love we are used to down here on this earth is based off of romanticism, which basically says that based on how the other person is, that is how you treat them. So basically from a guy's perspective, right? Based on how pretty the girl is, based on maybe the job she has, her personality, that is how you are nice to her or not nice to her, you just leave her, right? But God's love is completely different. You see, God's love stays the same throughout mistakes. God's love for us stays the same throughout everything we've ever done in our past or our future. God's love for us doesn't change. And those are the words that actually God is speaking to you even now. He wants you to know he's not condemned to call you his own. He's not ashamed of you. There is no shame. There is no condemnation when he sees you. He loves you so much. He's for you. He's not against you. And you see this love, when I looked into the eyes of Jesus, a lot of people ask me, Gabe, what did Jesus look like? Well, there is one painting that I'm thinking of that does a good job compared to other paintings, but in his eyes is love. He is love. And it's a love that's better than any romanticism. It's a love that's better than Valentine's Day. And it's a love that doesn't confirm shame or condemnation, but rather it confirms who he is. And that's what God wants you to know right now. He loves you no matter the mistakes you've made. And that is something that we as believers, we have Jesus living inside of us now. And the reason why we are down here on this earth, um, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why he sent me back down to this earth, that one of the reasons why I woke up from the coma, well, two, there was two reasons. One was, I have a destiny to fulfill. You have a destiny to fulfill as well. That's one of the reasons why you're seeing this video. God wants to tell you, you have a destiny to fulfill. You will fulfill it down here on this earth. Also, there was people praying in faith on this earth. God showed me my family members and friends, and, and I'm convinced even some of you guys that were praying in faith for me to come back, for me to be healthy, for me to be alive. And fulfill my destiny. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst of them. You see, when we pray in faith, when we join in agreement with another person in prayer, God has a bridge to move. And through that bridge of faith, he was able to send me back. So that's the first thing that I want to tell you about. God loves you. And you've heard that so many times, but I'm telling you, it's different when you hear it and you know him. I would encourage you, many people, another thing he showed me was many people know religion. You know tradition, you know rules, you know laws. But what truly changes your life is knowing Him. 
is relationship with him. Jesus is not religious at all. He did not die on the cross for religion. He died on the cross for relationship. That is something he showed me while I was in heaven. It wasn't me thinking to myself, oh, okay, I've gotta be religious because I'm in heaven with Jesus. No, it was, it was me with Jesus and Father was there as well. <laughs> um, the second scripture that I wanna share with you guys, John chapter 10. Another thing that Jesus showed me, there is no evil in him. He does not send sickness. He does not send poverty. He does not send bad things down to this earth to teach us things. No, this earth he's not in control of. Jesus is someone who is willing and able to do miracles and he wants to do miracles. But the truth is that the miracles that he does, we have a responsibility to believe his word. And when we believe his word, his miracles flow. This is Jesus right here. A lot of people have said before to me, they say, Gabe, I, 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 or I remember one person right now, she said to me, Gabe, I wish I could have met Jesus in heaven like you. And the response that came up in me was so true. I said this, I said, you can know him today. You can meet him today. He's here. Every time you open your Bible, this is Jesus Christ. This isn't a less Jesus. This isn't like the type of Jesus that would text something unrelated to him. No, his word is him. And when I was with him, when as he was speaking to me, his word didn't set me up apart. Like it, it didn't, how do I, how do I best put this? His word wasn't separate of who he is. In fact, everything he said confirmed the word that was already spoken. So he didn't contract this Bible. He didn't say, oh yeah, the Bible, no, that's not my word. No, the Bible is him. That's why we love the Bible so much. It is Jesus Christ. This scripture, John chapter 10 and verse 10. And I also want to tell you guys, yes, you're, you're hearing the word of the Lord tonight. Always go back to the Bible. No matter what message you hear, no matter what person you hear from, always go back to Jesus. Always go back to Jesus. John chapter 10 and verse 10. I, I'm sensing in my heart, many of you watching this video, the devil has been trying to get you negative. The devil has been trying to get you to look at your life in ways that he wants you to look at it. But God says to you tonight that God believes the best of you. There's no shame. There's no condemnation. You are forgiven. You are redeemed. You are chosen by God. You will fulfill your destiny. You will do everything that God called you to do. You don't need to worry. You don't need to fear. John chapter 10 and verse 10, Jesus said, the thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that you would have life and life abundantly. One of the things that Jesus showed me was everything down here on this earth that isn't life and life abundant is from the devil. And so many things that happen down here on this earth, God doesn't have any responsibility with. In fact, it's people's choices. The Bible says in Genesis 1 that we were created in God's image and in his likeness. And that's not saying that we are exactly like God and we're, we could do everything that God can do and that we don't need God. No, 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 no. Instead, that means God is our father. And when a father has a child, if he's a good father, the child is like the father. What that means is you have a free will down here on this earth. And one of the things Jesus confirmed to me was that he's not like a robot controller controlling your life. Instead, he's freely allowing you to choose how you live every single day. And what I wanted to encourage you tonight with is this, or whenever you're watching this video is, if you have something in your life that you've thought about blaming God, you've thought about putting the responsibility back on God, maybe it's a sickness, maybe it's you lost a job, maybe it's a family member struggling, maybe it's a hospital thing, or whatever it is that you've struggled with before, and you've thought about blaming God, don't blame God at all. Instead, look in the mirror and think about how you can get closer to God. Think about how you can grow your faith. And if you're wondering how to grow your faith, it's to hear the word of God and never again question the goodness of God. God is good. He's a healer. He's a provider. He's more than enough. He's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's Jesus Almighty. Be quick to believe God's word. Also, physical things seem very real. Problems seem very real. But what is even more real is the blood of Jesus. What is even more real is the love of Jesus. You see this whole earth that we're even built upon. I know you've heard about the DNA and they've said things like, yes, the DNA is based on this or based on that. DNA and, and cells and everything that's based down on this earth formed by the word of God. It says that in Romans. And when the word of God was spoken, when God said light be and light was, and when God created the earth and the heavens, his word is the very foundation of it. 
That is why it's so important we choose to focus on his word. Spiritual things are more even real than earthly things, than physical things. I'm not saying earthly things aren't real, but I'm telling you, if you will choose to focus on what the Bible says today, if you will choose to focus your eyes on Jesus Christ, you will have joy, you will have light, you will have love. When I came back from that coma, I didn't have depression. I haven't had a loss of hope. Now, some uh, people in my life, I love my family so much. They were so amazing. And and my friends, most of them ha had an amazing time with me when I came back because they were like, Gabe's back, let's go. Um, also, at the same time, some people did go through some struggles with hearing from doctors that were saying he might not live or that they were saying, oh, he might not have a personality or memory when he comes back. And they were kind of struggling with that. But when I came back, I wasn't struggling with the potential of losing my personality or losing my memory or losing something in my life. Instead, I chose to focus on the Word of God. I've now finished therapy. I'm doing very well. I'm playing basketball again. I'm lifting. I'm working out. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect, okay? Ain't nobody perfect. But what I am telling you is I chose instead to focus on the Word of God. And I knew I was healed. And they've done tests on me. And they've looked at my case. And I remember one doctor, he expected me to come in in a wheelchair. I didn't come in in a wheelchair at all. I came walking perfectly good in. And he was shocked. He was like, I expected you coming in a wheelchair, but man, you're doing good. But that's just a reflection of the truth of the word of God, which says, by Jesus stripes, you are healed. So as I close out this video, I just want to tell you, believe God's word today. He really is real. And you don't have to go to heaven. You don't need to fall off your skateboard like I did and bang your head and break your skull and almost die to know this truth. Instead, you could choose to open up your Bible today and also look in the mirror. Be quick to adjust your own life. Be quick to humble yourself and say, God, how can I change today to be closer to you? God, what do I need to adjust in my life? God, what do you want me to do today? Look in the mirror and always be humbling yourself. And if you'll humble yourself, God will exalt you. This is just the start of the things I'm gonna be sharing with you guys about my trip to heaven. I'll be sharing with you guys much more, um, but I wanted to keep this, this part short. Love others, love God and love others and know that he's good. God is not evil. He doesn't send sickness. He doesn't send poverty. Our God is a good God. Amen. If this was your first time, feel free to subscribe. If you want to hit the like button, you can. That just helps this video get out to more people. 